Hello everyone, my name is Jake Shens. I'm a fourth year here at the University of Cincinnati. And today we'll be talking about the neurotic needs and trends of a person as it pertains to chapter five with Karen Horney. To start off, we'll kind of talk about what the neurotic needs and trends are. So first off, neurotic needs, as according to the book, are a set of 10 irrational defenses against fear that becomes also a permanent part of one's personality. And then also neurotic trends are a set of three different categories of attitudes that a person may have towards oneself or also others that express a person's requirements. So one thing I really found fascinating about this is how Karen Horney kind of dives into her own previous life, or just her life situations, I guess I should say, not her previous life, and just how it kind of connects to her making these um, theories and th just theorizing in general. <clears throat> so kind of just something I found very interesting was that uh, Karen Horney throughout her life kind of really searched for and also had trouble with finding love and relationships. I believe her longest one was about 20 years, and she was very heartbroken and devastated when that ended. So then after that, she also really found a real big connection with like childhood and children in general, and she did agree with Freud, uh, Freud that, that the early years of childhood are important in shaping children in their minds. However, Horney did disagree and said that social forces, not biological forces, influence the personality development in children which is kind of interesting to read, just the little difference between the two there. And she also went on to say that children are a big facet in the safety need, which is the requirement for security and the thought of having freedom book from fear. So when I read about that, I kind of really thought of um, just the children being carefree, not really worrying about anything besides just really what they were going to do for the day, meaning like whether they were going to play outside or something like that. They didn't really have anything to fear. The neurotic trends, three different personality types that we had aforementioned, are the first going to be the com compl compliant excuse me, personality, which is a set of behaviors and also attitudes reflecting a desire to move against people. And what horny means by that one is difficult people, so maybe someone you'd have an argument with, or someone that just really comes off as not being easy to get along with. You have aggressive personality, which is a set of behaviors and attitudes reflecting a desire to move toward people. So now, so now when I first read about this one, I thought aggressive would mean more so kind of what a uh, compliant person would be. However, aggressive could be more so of seeking love. And that one could also be determined as being needy or perhaps clingy to the situation. Lastly, you have the detached personality which is a set of behaviors and attitudes reflecting a desire to move away from people. So now this would be someone that's indifferent. Also, you can kind of consider this person a loner. They don't really have the need to be around people, whether it be family or friends. They more so are just off alone doing their own thing. So now we have to talk about insecurity and how it ties into neurotic needs. So Horney states that there's a basic need for people to want to be liked, and I believe that's very true. People will do a lot of things in society today where they aren't, nor aren't normally or necessarily seeking the satisfaction of being successful, but they're more so having the insecurity that has the fear of not being liked. And they want to do things in society that has the possibility of them being liked by others, whether it's their family or their friends or even strangers. And some people may actually strive for goals on a pure basis of wanting to be liked instead of seeing themselves succeed, and they may not even realize it. And something to keep in mind is that, like the people that are indifferent, um, they may not all seek affection. Some people may rather be alone, and those are the people that may be doing their or accomplishing accomplishing excuse me their goals purely on the fact that they want to accomplish that goal. A few other key terms to uh, keep in mind when we discuss neurotic needs are idealized self-image, which is basically a romanticized picture of one's own being built, being built on a, a flexible, realistic assessment of one's abilities. So when I first read about that, I kind of thought of the idea of one putting themselves on a pedestal, meaning you put yourself a lot higher than you actually are, or you just hold yourself to a higher standard necessarily than perhaps you should and I sometimes you uh, should have 
self-confidence, but there's always a difference between confidence and cockiness. And I really thought that idealized self-image really kind of tapped into that one. And then there's also basic anxiety. And this is another reason I really like to choose this chapter was because anxiety is a growing factor in a lot of people's lives nowadays. And some people don't realize it. Some people actually cope with it enough to where they have to be prescribed medicine to deal with anxiety. And our basic anxiety is basically the pervasive feeling of loneliness and helplessness that is the foundation of neurosis. And so really the anxiety feeling touches home for me, at least just the thought of not being able to submit an assignment on time, um, not working enough in a week, even not seeing my family as much as I like. I mean, there's anxiety that comes in all different shapes and forms. And I think that's very, very key with neurotic needs because you're going to want something that's going to calm down your anxiety. And then you also have neurotic competitiveness, which is the indiscriminate need to win at all costs. And when I first read about that one, I thought about one of my friends in high school. We would always play basketball together and we'd always play one-on-one. -on -one. And he, he wasn't the best and granted neither was I, but he would always play and you wouldn't be able to get off the court with him until he beat you. So definitely neurotic competitiveness comes into play with this because you don't necessarily have that feeling of wanting to be liked but you have that feeling of wanting to be successful. And I really thought that that connected with my friend because he wanted to feel successful. He didn't want to get off the court until he had won a game. So in general, with all this coming in from this chapter, I just thought it really tied in great with everyday life and just how people want to be liked and might be doing things for the wrong reasons instead of just wanting to purely do something because they can be successful. And you should want to see yourself succeed. Granted, you are going to seek the affection of people that you do love, like your family and your wife or husband or whoever else you hold dear to yourself. But I don't think you should ever do something based on the fact that you want someone else to be happy. You should always be focused on doing something just to make you happy. You should be focused on going out and doing something that you love to do, not something that someone else wants to see you do, if that makes sense. Because necessarily, if I go out and do something... That may make my friend happy. It may be something else that doesn't make me happy at all and I may not enjoy it, but I'm doing it purely based on the fact that my friend likes it. So I just really thought that chapter was interesting and I hope that you all do as well.